I just saw this post that um, what is like a four year old kid saved up money to get a a feature with Bootsy. I think it was. Uh, I was Bootsy? like, yeah. Uh, you said a seven year old kid, four year old, a four year old saved kid? up his lunch money, and I was like, he doesn't even go to school. <laughs> How does he save up his lunch money to get a feature? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, The Empire Podcast. And yes, we have another great topic today. And uh, before we get into it, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, my name is Antonio D. Miles. And uh, today we have a great episode. But before we talk about it, let's uh, introduce who's going to be in the panel. It's your boy, Tarek T, man, T. Giuliano. What it do? Cool, cool. And... Uh, so yeah, today's topic is going to be about hip hop. Is that right, T? Correct, correct. Cool, cool. Bring that a little closer to you. There you go. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about hip hop, right? Yeah. So you know, let's talk about way, let's talk about growing up. The way um uh, you know hip hop is right now compared to you know the times when we grew up. Like man, I remember growing up, you know, listening to hip hop. You know, my first hip hop record, like. First, I always um, loved Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like, you know, I had got a um, CD from them. Um, well, at the time, you know, talking about the difference, like it was a cassette player, not even a, um, a CD. So back then, you know, cassette tapes were, you know, pretty much in style. So I had got a CD from them, and they were like my first, like, they introduced me to hip hop. For me, Bone Thugs and Harmony. You know, I grew to love them, but then. As far as like being a rap star, of course, I always thought Tupac was like the best rapper ever. He was a star. Both those Harmony yeah. were good rappers that I liked. I love both those Harmony, but Tupac was the star. He was like, oh man, the star. Like he's that guy. And like I remember um, how I got tuned in to Tupac. I remember the first video I ever seen, uh, like a cartoon, any type of cartoon way, was Do for Love. You know, as a kid, you know, I related to you know the cartoons back then, and it was like, oh wow, it was it was in cartoon. I was like, oh shit. Okay, like do for love, like Tupac. Facts. And then I just, you know, like, you know, I know you, you know, you also probably have some memories growing up with Tupac. Everyone does, you know. So Yeah, definitely. Even uh, I'm glad you mentioned Bone Thug. So I remember um Meet Me at the Crossroads when that That's came how out. I fell in love with him. Yeah. That was that was a hit. I remember um Pause. I told my uh I told my mom, I was like, yeah, the art, of, the art of War came out by Bone Thugs and Harmony. I told my mom, I was like, yeah, they're like a Christian group. They talk about God and <laughs> everything like that. And give me the Art of War album. And she bought it for me. I remember she, she bought it for me. Well, because, you know, they're talking about, you, know, in, in, you remember the video talking about like God and heaven and everything yeah, like that. Boom, boom, so boom, boom. so um, I got her to, to give it, to get that album for me. And I remember that album had um, the track with Tupac on that one. And uh, I think for a lot of us growing up in LA, Tupac, Shakur, Man. Tupac Amaru Shakur, Cali, growing up in Cali, period, was, um, was really a big influence on a lot of us kids. And I remember, man, the day when he passed. Do you remember when he passed? See, I was a little bit younger. So when I first got in tune to Tupac, like I really listened to Tupac, it was like late 90s. So it was like late 90s going into the, like the 2000s, maybe like 98, 99, 2000. So I don't remember when he passed because I was a little younger. I'm 92, by the way, so I was just like a little younger. Got you. So I remember when he passed. I remember, um, uh, I think me and my mom were in Pasadena at the time, and they were, I think it was 92.3 The Beat. Theo was uh, the host, Filipino cat. Uh, with the smooth voice, and they're like, "Yeah, Tupac Shakur just passed away in the hospital, to being shot." And I remember, man, the kid. I was like, "Wow, okay, crazy, mm -hmm. crazy." But um, do you remember the East Coast West? Oh, you run, you probably don't remember the East Coast. West I remember, Coast I remember the aftermath of all that. I'm like, yeah. I, I go as far as like the aftermath. So, but um, going back to Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like how you said, um, the crossroads and yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, I remember that video too, cause they had an angel up in it, and they were just like, 
you know, it was like very coordinated. It was like showing you something. Then I, I had an Uncle Charles. So I miss my Uncle Charles, y'all. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was unique because I have an uncle. A great, a, a great uncle named Uncle Charles. I was like, I miss my uncle. <laughs> Going in front of this home. But I was just like, man. Mm-hmm. Like, that song was so mm-hmm. popular. Like, I remember to see those like early hip hop days for me. Those are the certain songs like Do For Love, uh, Miss My Uncle Charles, y'all, Crossroads. Uh, I remember when Missy Elliott used to wear like I can't stand it right. I remember that. And then she had the like, trash oh, bag. She had the trash bag mm-hmm. suit. When my window, I was like, oh man, it was just so unique. It was like, you know, I think they they brought the uniqueness to hip hop. Her and then I remember Busta Rhymes. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it? That one. That one. Yeah, I remember Busta Rhymes came out. I was like, man, he was just so moving around. I feel like he was early stages of. Ludacris, I feel like Busta Rhymes really the one that before Ludacris did all that in the videos. I feel like mm-hmm. Busta Rhymes, mm-hmm. him and Missy, they used to always like do their so, thing, do yep. their thing. Facts. And then I remember that was like that was that was like '90s, and then I just remember, you know, then the 2000s, it was just a whole new wave. And then that's when that um, for me, I remember um, being at home, I was watching Pokemon, and then um, gotta catch up. Then all. it's crazy, man. I watched Pokemon, and then I remember um, turning to 106 in part. Then they came out with a new joint, and it was Nelly, Country Grammar. Mm, I'm going down, down, baby. Oh, mm-hmm. see. I remember, I remember all that. I was like, who is this guy? Got ready to let it go. But it was jamming, though. Yep. You know, so those are my early, early stages of hip hop. So those are like, all, for me, like all the people that, you know, those are my beginnings. Facts. Hip hop. I don't know, me and yours might be different, though. What was your layout? But, you well, know, you know. I think we're always still growing up listening to it. Well, I think I guess it changes when you get to like past your twenties. But um last night, um So Fresh and So Clean came on. Okay. And I was like, Oh okay. man, this is a jam. And I was chilling with the homie and he was like, Fuck he's like, Fuck, I feel old. <laughs> Cause he was like, I remember when this song came out and like we dated it like twenty two years ago. Came out in two thousand. Crazy. I remember yeah. when that song came out. I was living in Paramount because mm-hmm. Cause my um my teacher was was Mr. Jackson and I got in trouble and my mom was like you are gonna be going to school to I'm sorry Mr. Jackson I am for real yeah, when I got in trouble and you know, to make like I remember that was two thousand you correct I remember when that came out like I remember like when I look at Outkast now I'm like man and then when I when I remember when I did the backstory of them they were even popping in the nineties yep. They were popping in the nineties so Southern Cali playlistic exactly um but yeah we're t- like um. That song came on and it was just like, wow, this song is still hot. Good music, good art will always last forever. But I was like, yeah, it's 22 years ago and uh, still hot, still fresh. And then um, what song came on after? Tricky by Run DMC. Trick, trick, tricky. <laughs> and it made me think like, okay, like uh, so fresh and so clean for us is a hot track. But when it came out and I can imagine someone else growing up that song for them, Tricky, was hot for them. So, like, different eras of hip-hop, you know, people grew up listening to it. Like, there's someone right now who's, like, growing up on Little Dirk. You know Correct. what I mean? Little Dirk, Little Baby, yeah. You know what I mean? People are growing up on that. Rowdy Rich, you know, people are growing up on that. So, it's just, like, interesting. It's just different generations, which I find kind of cool, you know? And that that um, attributes to the uh, different styles. You get what I'm saying? Hundred percent different like, eras. Every, only thing that stayed the same is rhyming. Only thing that stayed the same is rhyming. But as far as like, you know, the technique, you know, um, the sound, you know, different elements has been added on. T- you know, to change hip hop, but it's still standing. It's still standing. Hip hop is still standing. Well, and, yeah, you know, hip hop. Hip hop is. Uh, it's here. It makes it makes the most money for the for the corporations. That in country music. I believe make the most money for it, the corporations. Oh, through a country music, man. yeah, country music is huge. Speaking of speaking huge. of Nelly, I remember he had a country song. That speaking of country music, that was my first time seeing the the um, exchange or the um, collab between country artists and the hip hop artist. Oh, mm-hmm. in my head, remember that song. I think about it over and over again. Nelly, Tim, uh-huh. Nelly, Tim McGraw. I can't keep. That was like wow. That was big. That was big. All right. And then I was looking at the interview. About um, Nelly, and he was like, he's the only one rapper, or he's the only person, artist, that has hits on the top 100, um, popular. Uh, he said he, he said the only thing he don't got is classical. He got he got a, a record on country, R&B, 
You know what I'm saying? He said he just don't got classical. I was yeah, like, damn. He didn't make it. He probably oh, didn't even get damn. rock and roll. Probably neither. Probably no rock and roll. But shout out to Nelly, man. He's making his money. Shout out to Nelly. Um, but like, you know, hip hop has been like crucial, I think, in our lives. You know, probably for a lot of people's lives, actually. Um, like, wh- what do you think hip hop means to you? To me, it's a, like, it's an escape. You know, it's like, you know, I feel like when I listen to hip hop, I'm listening, I'm in this world. And like a lot of the artists... You know, whether you like it or not, you know, some have their different opinions, but a lot of these artists, even if they, if you feel like they're not being real or not, like some stuff that, you know, a lot of these artists say, I'm like, damn, I can relate. I've been through that. Oh, okay. So they're, they're just expressing, you know, they're just a one person to express the emotion of thousands of people. They got different, you know what I'm saying? He's going to carry this emotion for a decent amount of group of people. He's going to carry this emotion for that everywhere around me. That's why they call them fans, you know, so thousands of fans, you know. They okay around that emotion and they understand that person that's giving out that art. So it's like, you know, that's what it means to me. It's a form of expression. It's a form of an, an escape. Yeah. Now I'm in a different world, but it's like, you know, a, it's a form of empowerment, you know, encouragement. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, it's soulful. It comes from the soul. So it's like, you know, and I feel like this is my style of music. You get what I'm saying? I feel like every group of people have their own style of music, what they relate to and what they're, you know, this, this is what I knew growing up, hip-hop and R&B, you know. This is mm-hmm. what my family was listening to, you know, growing up. They were listening to hip-hop or R&B, you know. So that's when, you know, as I got older, you know, I, that's you know, about right. I heard, I started listening to other other genres and stuff, you know. But as far as, like, singing, like, you know, there's other c- groups, like, I know I like the Backstreet Boys, or it was in sync. But I remember when they were popping, they had a couple hits. They know? had some hits. They had some hits, but um. But they're basically uh, carbon water washed copies of Boys to Men. I never. Mm. They have a they have a documentary on Netflix about that. Oh okay. Oh okay. I never. Yeah. Mm. They're basically like a carbon white washed copy of Boys to Men. Oh, crazy. Interesting, huh? Yeah, interesting, man. When interesting. you think about it, right? Now, <laughs> you think, about think about it. About now, it yeah, think about I'm it. I'm like, oh man, what he's on to something, man. Yep. Yep. But yeah, that's what it basically means for me, you know, you know, sense of encouragement, you know what I'm saying? I feel good, you know, it gets me in the mood, whatever mood I'm in, you know, if I'm in happy mood, I know what songs to play. If I'm in a, you know, a little argue with somebody, I'll be like, man, I don't want to hear that, man. I want to hear this, huh, man. If I'm mad, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear this, man. Put some DMX on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Play, I want to hear that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I feel like it's 30 years, you know, I've been in this world, about to be 30, 29. For a long time, and then I'm like, then hip hop's been around even hip hop's older than me, and it's still around. Way so it's older. like, you know, so it's like back in the day, you know, who would have thought that it would still be around, still the number one genre? I just went to the Kendrick show, I didn't expect that many people to be there in Ontario, you know what I'm saying? This wasn't LA, this was in Ontario, so it's like, I was like, man. Kendrick, he was like, man, it feels good to be home, man. I think he's in L.A. right now, but he was, he's yeah. like, yeah, it feels so good to be, be back, back in Cali. Cali. Yep. feels good to be back in Cali, yep. you know. And then I was just like, the performance, people show so much love to him, chanting his name when they did the intermi- intermission. After Baby King performed first, and he was getting a lot of love. He had a lot of his, too. After he performed, it was like a a, 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 f- a 15 to 20-minute intermission. But you know Kendrick was coming. So everybody left, got their drinks, made their moves, you get know what I'm saying? Uh, you know? Kendrick's po- a superstar. Politics through different people, but it's like once he came on, it was a rap. Everybody's glued to the seat. That's what Some they people were not glued, for. literally glued to the seat. For me, means you were in there, you didn't miss it, you didn't leave. But some people were standing up that they had a seat, you know, unless you were on the floor seats. But it's like, I was just shocked. Like, I'm like, man, this man, things I don't do it for the gram, I do it for content. I'm just like, man, do they understand? Like, a lot of people, I'm like, man, do some of these people. You know, they didn't grow up in that type of lifestyle. They didn't grow up with that culture. Their culture is totally different. Do they understand what Kendrick's going through? Because a lot of stuff Kendrick is saying, I have been through, you know, I hear as a black man. I have, you know, been through it. And I understand what he's saying. We hate Popo. One of us dead in the street for sure, you know? So mm-hmm. I'm just like, that's how it is. And I'm just like, you know, you know, are they, do they listen to Kendrick and understand? Or do they listen to Kendrick for as sympathy? Like, oh, man, I feel it. I feel you. Or are they just, you know, or they just like the music, you know? So I think we'll get into that. We'll get so, into that about other rappers. But what hip hop means to me is uh, it actually saved my life. So uh, it really did as an escape, as understanding, as truth. Um, it really saved my life as having, as having a creative outlet to express myself personally. 
and then relate to other great people like Andre 3000. So that's what hip hop means to me. Uh, I'm not really in tune with what people call hip hop today as much, um, but I'm more of what they call the golden era of hip hop, which for people who don't know is the early 90s, Tribe Called Quest and all that era, that whole era, you know, reasonable doubt stuff, you know. Um, there are some few people that are, for in my opinion, that still got the swag like Kendrick, who I think is basically kind of like the leading prophet of the young generation that's doing it. Um, but yeah, that's what hip hop means to me personally, you know, other than that, that's kind of like the simple version for it to me. And, you know, you're talking about the black community and stuff like that. So what do you think hip hop means for the black community? Oh man, hip hop means everything. You know, like I said before, it's an escape the community, the black community, you know, uh, minority community, you know, anybody that's in a struggle community, you get what I'm saying? You know, just a, it's an outlet. Like I said before, it's an outlet. And then it's like a lot of us could relate to what a lot of these rappers are saying. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Police brutality, things that's going on, you know, racism. And it's like, you know, these are black, a lot of, you know, black people speaking about this. So we, you know, we identify, you know, we identify with this. So that that's how I feel, feels for the culture. And it's like something, like I said before, as an escape, Something like a, a a black man, you know, if he becomes successful and becomes good, he can change his family life, change the outlook on his life. You get what I'm saying? His future, his kids' future is very profitable for the black community, you know. It's been profitable for the black community, you know. So profitable for other communities too, you know. But, you know, it's a way that a black man can make some money. A black person can make some money, you know. And it just shows, like, man, we are talented. It's like, dang, black people are really talented, like, you know, like really talented, really gifted. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like I feel like other people from other um, countries and, you know, different um, parts of the um, earth, um, they, 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 they understand with the American culture, too, because it's like that's why I say it's American culture. It's not it's not just it's an African-American culture, black man in America. It's not. It evolved to other parts of the world, but this is the root from it. So the root of it is the life of a African American. That's what hip hop I feel like is. Not the root, but it's just like that's that's what it is. And um so I feel like that's like, you know, they can relate because I have African friends who think I'm just so cool. Oh man, American you know, he's American black, you know, hip hop. Like, man, y'all y'all wear the hats man hip hop. I love Tupac. You know what I'm saying? That that's that's what they tell me. Man, I love Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know they, they I, they pull up on me, they, they they bump in the game, you get what I'm saying? The new the song that's going on right now, they're so embraced into this culture by them now living out here. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, they, you know, that's why they think that I'm just so cool and you know what I'm saying? They they want to, they think, oh yeah, I know her. Hey, yo, you know where the girl's at, man. You know you know where they at. You know what I'm saying? You know, no? Show us to the females. Sh yeah, show us to the females. Take show us to the females. <laughs> for real, for real. Take us to the females, man. Where's popping at, man? Because, you know, I went to school out here. You know, they went to, uh, their high school was in their country. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They didn't come out here till college. That's how they got out here, through academics. So they they came out here in college. But as far as, like, knowing the area, knowing where to go in there, knowing where not to go, you get what I'm saying? You know, they're going to run to the African Americans first because we have that kind of connect Africa or black. So they're going to try to talk, you know, mm -hmm. getting good with us to see where it's at. But like, yeah, that's how I feel. You know, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's very commercial. It's very commercial and it puts a black man commercial, like, you know, mainstream, you know. So, you know, it's a lot of benefits to it, you know. Like, I just, I, I peep everything out. Like, you know, this man from Compton could like have all these walks of life cheering his name, you know, chanting you know, that he did for Compton. They chanting it, too. They saying, we're going to be all right. He got them doing chants. It's like, man, I'm just like, damn, everybody feeling it. It's like this one person could, like, influence so much. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter. Black, white, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. They feel him, and they rocking with it. And it doesn't matter. It goes beyond race then. So it's like, mm -hmm. man, it was just, you know, I will just, you know, that's why it's good to experience things in life because this is something I'm going to keep. I'm going to hold. It's like, you know, that man put on a show. It's a memory. Put on a show. But that's what yeah. I feel like it means. It gives a black man like him from Compton, any rapper from the hood, Brooklyn, you know, New Orleans, you know, it doesn't matter, Detroit, Chicago, like gives them a voice, you know, to talk about where they came from and how they made it out, you know, uh, inspire everybody. Gotcha. 
Um, I think modern hip hop for the community is terrible because most of it's clout driven. People are trying to get money, drugs, it's a violence. And so it's teaching other kids to do that, other people to pursue that. So I think modern hip hop is terrible for the community. You have exceptions like Kendrick Lamar, who's a, a rare exception. Maybe, maybe J. Cole, but those are few, those are like two out of a million people talking about the same old shit. So I think hip hop now, what people call hip hop now is terrible for the community. It's not helping the community at all. Maybe if they're talking about, hey, go to school, stay in school, help your family support, uh, better the community. Don't, don't kill another motherfucker out here. Support them, support each other, support black businesses. Then I would say something different, but hip hop now is terrible for the black community. Terrible. Probably more people, you know, how many, <laughs> a rapper just died, PNB, right? A rapper just died, got shot. And apparently, I heard he was doing good things for the community, wasn't he? Yeah, so he's a Philly rapper. You know, who was doing good things in Philly, right? doing good things in Philly. All right, so, you know, you know, it's and it's just like, oh, another dead black man. Okay, cool. He rapped. Okay, not surprised. Whatever. On to the next one. Oh, a black female rapper is doing this drama with some other body. Okay. Next thing. Ne <laughs> oh, what, it's nothing new. It's the same old thing. It's, it's terrible, right? But, you know, but we have people like what we had. Someone like Nipsey, who was actually doing something positive, right? And so, you know, it's things like that. We we the system lets the negativity of Black America run rampant, but the positivity of Black America is cut quick. So you're saying does it doesn't doesn't quick. move as fast? It's cut off. It's cut off quick. And so, just like how you said Kendrick Lamar had people saying we're gonna be all right. If you realize that music is the most powerful weapon, music and media is the powerful weapon to influence the masses. So if I say, hey, love and respect one another, or fuck that nigga, I'm going to get my bag, I'll shoot and kill another nigga, fuck, him. <laughs> fuck my other niggas because I'm down for my niggas. So which, one's, oh, which, one, which one does the people who are not black that are controlling the media want to go out, right? So... In my opinion, I think hip hop currently is destroying the black community as opposed to helping support it. I feel like, you know, everyone has their own opinion. You know, you gotta understand this is the world we live in. You could we, we could go deep into it to why, you know, like I say it is black culture, but we could go deep into it to understand, you know, the reason why it's a lot going on with that. It's like a lot of anger. So, you know, that's just what it is. And hip hop has been Talking about shooting nigga, killing nigga, this or that, you know what I'm saying? Since it came out. Don't remember, you know, you get what I'm saying? Um It didn't start when, happening until uh gangster what, rap started happening in when the early nineties. Nah, the eighties when they came the out with 80s. straight out of Compton. It was Lit. a woman like high school from a gang called niggas. Yeah, like I said, I gangster gotta rap. off. When the cue the trigger and bodies all hauled off. Gangster rap. So when that came out, it was like, Oh man, what's going on now? You get what I'm saying? But that's what they were living in. and it was just a lot of anger you know was, like I said before you gotta understand being in a black man's shoes just a lot going on a lot on our backs so we have that built up anger and that's just how we feel because we grew up in that environment and it goes even deeper in generations generation before that so it's a reason for everything and it's like that's why now of course we should be promoting more I feel like it's more conscious rappers than it was back in the day you got Kendrick you get what I'm saying like Perfect title, Good Kid, Mad City. It's a Mad City, but name five. Trying to name five conscious rappers. Conscious rappers: Kendrick, J Cole. You don't think he's a conscious rapper? I'm just waiting because <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna put you on the spot because you're gonna talk shit. Okay, you now name five other rappers. Regular rappers. Regular rappers. I'm still on a conscious rapper. I could say Wale is conscious because he. You no, know, you're taking too long. He's taking, taking too, long. too long. He take way too long. So that proves my point. Right, and black people have been going through hard stuff everywhere, but that's why hip hop was invented too. So the whole thing about hip hop and this whole thing is that hip hop was to turn something negative into positive. True, true. Period. True. Period. Broken glass everywhere, and they just don't care. But every generation has a come up story to it. That's the eighties, this the nineties come up story. So it's going to always be it some drama. It doesn't matter. It's about you know? changing something negative into a positive. You can express yourself, whatever you want. But what I'm saying is that who's controlling the out 
input. I see what you're saying. Not enough, not 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 enough um, positivity input as far as like you know. Oh, I see what you're saying. Who's controlling the output? I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. So if I can get, if I can get this community to just tear themselves apart and destroy themselves and get other people to support them, here's, and this is the greatest part about it, right? And we're gonna get into it. Majority of what was the majority of races you saw at the concert you were there? Man, Mexican and um, white. Thank you. Mexican and white. Thank you. You could so, count the you can you can't obviously can't couldn't count the black people, but black people were not the um the majority they, were still, there. they were still minorities. So majority of people who actually support hip hop are not even black people financially. That should say that should say something else. True. I that should, I should, say, that True. should tell you something else, right? So that's all I really <laughs> want to say with that. But going back to, uh, I think it's terrible for the community. Current hip hop that's yeah. being passed out through the mainstream media is it's, terrible. It's definitely more hardcore now. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say now. It's just that you could see everything now. So if you was in the nineties, you could see everything. You would, oh man, they was doing all this nineties. You know, social media wasn't invented back then. So now social media just turned into another level. It's it's now including hip hop. So a lot of the stuff that they're talking about doing, you know. You could see it displayed from your phone. And, I'm not talking about. I'm talking about TV. strictly the music. I don't yeah, care but what they're but doing. I'm yeah, about it, it involves it involves to the music too, though. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking strictly music. It involves to the music too. But yeah, let's talk about the social media and rap. What about social media and rap? So, like with social media and rap, like I just said before, um, like it advanced. You know, like. What they're talking about, you can see now. You get, you get what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, if he's talking about he's going to shoot, shoot, boom, boom, boom. If he's talking about that in his raps, oh, he must be really about it. You know, we see it over here on, on social media. You, you think someone's going to shoot somebody on social media? Is uh, that what you're saying? No, it ha- it's, it ha- it's happened. Someone has shot somebody and posted it on social media? No, like someone will be live, a game member, or somebody will be arguing live with their op or their enemy. Then all of a sudden they're somewhere and they'll just get shot during live. You know what I'm saying? Terrible. But <laughs> that is terrible. That's you know that's just the way life is. You know what I'm saying? So that's the way they choose. And to make a lot life. of people they're they're acting like this. You know, a lot of people are influenced. You know, with the rap style. You got the stuff that's going on in Chicago. You know, with the drill music. You know, that's why I feel like it's more. That's why alluding to what you said earlier, more hardcore. You know, my generation they weren't. They were still talking about some shoot shoot. Of course, that's just part of hip hop. It's gonna be a little bit of it, but I don't, now I understand what you're saying. It's more out there now. Well, especially I feel like you know what started with like the drill music with the Chief Keef posting all the guns on the videos, mm-hmm. then also posting it on on YouTube. How come certain stuff could get banned on YouTube, but these kids out here posting guns, talking about they gonna shoot the op, it, the video doesn't get banned or taken down. But if you have somebody like Brother Rizza Islam talking about how that's negative for the community and talking about the community and puts it on YouTube, you guys banned him. But you don't ban all these kids in Chicago over here posting guns all up on um all up on YouTube and all that. You don't ban that. You want that to be seen. You want us out here killing each other. You want us to provoke it and we want us to see it. You know what I'm saying? Sneak this in the dead, talking about the dead, you know, smoking the dead, putting all that. And really social media, period, not just YouTube, you know what I'm saying? So it's like they wanna um I understand that part, you know. It's a lot of shoot, shoot, bang them up now, you know, post. Posting, you know, the videos with the gun now, you get what I'm saying? Talking about this next black man, you get what I'm saying? You know, they, you know, people that, the conscious people that talk about the negativity of that, they want to get rid of, but they want to YouTube, doesn't care. You know, it makes money for them. And they like, but they understand this affects our culture. Like, we have brothers and sisters, we, and you know, that, that that's, that's, that, that's going away, past trauma, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the system. And then, you know, this is just being out there in the airways. Like, you're like a lot of the kids, they weren't black. That financially helps hip hop. You know what I'm saying? But when they go home, they're listening to everything that goes on in the black community. So they're like, man, that's how it is. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, maybe they want to experience it. And they pay for it. You get what I'm saying? Some people are going through some things too, but it's like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, a lot of the, um, you know, the negative is being. Pushed, pushed way more because they have more of an outlet to push it. You know, now social media, now it's not just the radio no more to push it. Now we got more avenues. We got social media we can push it up too. Oh, for sure. We have post this on Instagram. Okay, post that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, we'll go. okay, we got YouTube. Put that on YouTube. Boom, boom. Different avenues of promotion. You get know what I'm saying? So it's like, as far as like social media is concerned, as it evolves, you know, 
who knows what could happen next, you know, like I said, like you just, you know, like you're saying, P&B Rock, you know, how he passed, you know what I'm saying, or through social media, you know what I'm saying, so it's like, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of crazy, you know, um, the level that it is now, but at the same time, hip-hop always been talking about, you know, struggle, broken glass, like you said, broken glass, everywhere, struggle, and, you know, mm-hmm. bang, bang, shoot them up, you know, it's been like that, but it just, now, for sure, it's more, Everybody gonna want to have a gun. <laughs> That's what's being talked about now, and in, in, in um in the raps. Yeah, kids know how to hold a gun and not read a book. It's pretty awesome. But um, yeah, you know, so people control the social media sites, right? People can get banned for anything. So again, it goes back to if we want to talk about social media, it goes back to they want to allow the negative perpetration of Black American culture. So. It is what it is. It's fine. Controversy is fine. But um, what I do think, what, what's cool about hip hop and social media is that for these independent artists out here, they can they can get heard. They can get seen. They can get discovered. So I think that's really cool about hip hop and the social media and people can find each other, link up with other artists. I just saw this post that, um, what is like a four-year-old kid saved up money to get a, a feature with Bootsy, I think it was. Uh, I was Bootsy? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, you said a seven-year-old kid? Four-year-old. Four, a four-year-old? Saved kid? up his lunch money. And I was like, he doesn't even go to school. <laughs> How does he save up his lunch money to get a feature? But I was like, whatever. Did Bootsy do the feature? I, 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 I was just like, okay, whatever. Whatever. Oh, I man. commented on it. Some guy was like, well, there's preschool. I was like... <laughs> Whatever, whatever. <laughs> what the fuck? Whatever. Oh man, that's crazy. Whatever to get a feature. So. Oh man. Um, you know, and so it's cool. You know, you can meet other artists and stuff like that. That's I think the cool part about it. And you know, if we want to go back into like other races, you know, getting involved into this Black American art. Um, yeah, I think people can relate. I think a lot of people can just relate on a personal level. You know, there's, and what you learn in life is that people put their money into things they want to support. So that shows you right there, you know, all the different races I want to go and support. And, um, I think you talked, I think you mentioned this too earlier where, you know, there's might be some people, I think we mentioned this off camera where there's like some races who are just like, what are they listening to it because they like it or do they listen to it for, you know, for some other nefarious reasons. Yes, right. Yes. You want to get, you wanna get into that a to little get bit? Up to, like, I feel like I went there. I'm just like, okay. I observe a lot of things, like I said. You know what I'm saying? I'm there because I, I like Kendrick. You know, I understand what he's saying for the black man. I've been to Compton. I know what is out there. I know, you know, I understand. So I feel like, man, you know what I'm saying? So I, that's what I went there for. Like, I feel you, brother. I, you know, I feel mm-hmm. you, brother. And it's like, you see the other races there. I was just like, oh, man, how can they relate? Some might can relate. Everybody, like you said, everybody goes through their own little struggle on a personal level. Mm-hmm. But they're over here, you know, I'm like, are they, where are they here? A lot of people are here because they are going through something or they're there to just understand it a little more or they're just for the love of the music, you know what I'm saying? Which is fine, yeah. all fine to I me. I think all three are good, yeah. All, all three fine are good. to me. But mm-hmm. it's like when he says, we going to be all right. My nigga, we is they saying nigga too. <laughs> That's what's definitely, what I think. Oh, they say nigga too because definitely. on the floor seats, I see a lot of oh, non-black people. Uh, you know, definitely. So I'm like, are they saying we gonna be a nigga? We gonna be alright? So I'm like, I wonder what Kendrick thinks about that. You know, and I'm like, I wonder what he thinks about. He already that. know. He knows. He's he in knows the business. Sure. He knows. Hey, sh- he's conscious enough to know what I say. People are gonna say for sure. So but, it's like, yeah, and I'm just like, man, wow, they're feeling it. You know, nigga, we gonna nigga, we gonna be alright. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying, you know. So it's like, I just be like, man, okay, okay. You know, they love this shit. Yeah, they love it. And I, I think it's cool, whatever they come from. I think as long as people are not coming from a negative approach to it, like, um, I can't even give an example, but I'm thinking like, if people want to like listen to like rap music just to say the n word, just to say nigga, you know what I mean? Like if people want to just Kendrick like Kendrick wasn't tripping, was allowed to say that at the, at the concert. You know, like if they're doing it just to do something like that, then that's that's a different story. Um, but if you know you just fuck with it because you're like, man, I just love the music, I love the artist, et cetera, et cetera. You know, he makes me feel a certain way. They or that person makes me feel a certain way. It's cool. Like I was listening, I was listening to the Cure the other day, like uh, 
mm, boys don't cry or whatever that whatever song they sing i was like boys don't cry you know i was like oh this song is hard like the 80s stuff i was like this shit's hard i don't grow i don't grow up thinking that shit but i was like this shit's dope this is a good song you know and so you know i think people just love music and art in general so i think as long as people are coming from like a good place it's cool but i i, I can kind of see where you're coming from where i think some people might come at hip-hop in like this weird negative way where they when they think they could say the word nigga more and stuff like that and they get a little bit too comfortable and then you know they start to say it and so that's i kind of have a I have my personal opinion with using the word nigga and because I think as black people, we're not comfortable with other races saying it. So my whole thing is just like, just take it out. Just take it out, period. So that way people don't say it because we get we, we start feeling a certain way with other races say it. So it's just yeah, like, sure. you know, what, you want to talk, talk about that a little bit? want to talk about that a little bit? Overall, I do feel like a lot of people were there because they love the, men, the music. He's a great... Argus, I'm not taking nothing for Kendrick. From Kendrick? Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm not taking nothing from Kendrick. So 100%. I do feel like people were there because they love his music. But yes. like you said before, I feel like, like I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm not one here to judge. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. when I see different types of people there, I'm just like, oh, man, wow, you you like, oh, you can understand this shit? Like, you feel how I feel? Facts. You feel how I feel? You like it? You feel how I feel? You like it? <laughs> so it's like, you like it too? I was like, oh, dope. I was like, man, dope. But, you know, some people might be there just as, you know, get a, like I said before, get a under, better understanding. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Definitely. That's so why I feel like get a, you know, some people might be there, oh, let me, you know, oh, okay, I understand you guys now. I understand the black community now more because of him. Because of Kendrick. You Possibly know what I'm or have an idea. Have an idea. And Maybe. then, you know, some people might say, they were like, you know, they probably didn't care. They probably got comfortable, got turned up. Nigga, we're going to be all right. And stay, mm-hmm. You know, not even trying to, not, they don't usually say it, but. It's, it's, it's music. It's just, it's music. Yeah, it's in the music. It's music, you know. But at the end of the day, a lot of people that say it, you know, they always want to say it anyway. So they probably, okay, they, they only slip up with that at Kendrick concert. <laughs> you know. And, you know, uh, going back to music and like other people loving it, like. This goes back to like even Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like these people are traveling globally, so they're traveling to other countries and other cultures. You know, they don't even speak the language, but they're singing the music, saying the music. You know, Kendrick's definitely been to other countries. A bunch of these big rappers have been to other countries. You know, and so it's just like going back to the base, which these people probably just really enjoy the artist's music. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's like you know, like American, like hip hop culture is like American culture. You know. Oh, it is. It's like ambassadors. It's ambassadors. So it's just like, that's why so many of these American rap rap stars, rap superstars could go to different countries and say, oh, I got me a, a, a overseas tour. They call it the world tour. I got a world yeah, tour. Yeah, world tour. Mm-hmm. We're on a world tour. Oh, my man. Then, you know, yeah. you know, but it's like, you could go on a world tour and then, you know, some of these people, some people don't even speak English, but they know that beat and they know that, that chorus. That's you it. Know, so they know that beat and they know that chorus. You know what I'm saying? So they could be in London. You know what I'm saying? Germany, you know what yep. I'm saying? Italy. I'll be like shocked. Like, man, these people go all the way over there. They know word for word. Everywhere. Pop Smoke go to London and Everywhere. they're just... Nah, 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 nah. Everywhere. Yeah, and they were liking on your bitch back. Like, I was like, well, man. I'm like, well, man. But I feel like for other countries, they get that one artist that's good. You know, that's just the guy from that country but that gets to come over here. That breaks know, through. That breaks through. Everybody yep. knows him. But I feel like yep. American rap stars... It's a lot of them, you know, like going overseas. That like you can reach overseas, like it's nothing. Facts, yeah. That's how. That's Once how. You make it big that's here. That's how much is spread out within the thirty years. You know what I'm Got saying? Got you. A good example is um, Twenty One Savage, right? He's not even American, right? And come to find out, come to find out, he's not, right? You know, so he's from London. He's from London. He's from well, he's born from- in London, raised in Atlanta. Okay, so he didn't grow up in London. No. Okay, so born, that's fine then. That's he grew fine. up like he left, maybe like. Nine, ten. To oh, okay, Atlanta. so I still can, I consider him American then, basically. Yeah, but yeah. Just, I guess his mama didn't do the paperwork right. Oh damn! After all these years, damn. And... Come on, mama. <laughs> like we're trying to be illegal. <laughs> um, nah, that's they from London. That's they ain't talking like that. Uh, good day, good, good day. We're, try, we're trying to be illegal. Did, did you see the memes? We're on trying him? to be oh, illegal. Oh man, they had his face. With the dudes, I forgot you call those dudes. You go to London, and they just don't talk. You can do whatever. You could be all in their face. I got you. That's like the royal pr- yeah, guards that, and stuff. That, they had him, her face with him, just standing there while everybody was talking shit about you. Ain't American, dude. You ain't not You ain't that. You ain't from Milano. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He just standing, not doing nothing. I just think that is so, so funny. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, 21, we have to go back to the motherland, get some tea. But as far as, you know, like, 
hip hop expanding, I feel like the most artists, hip hop artists, and artists in general, just artists, you know, in the music music world outside the U.S. has the most outside the U.S. for me. I would say Canada. You know, Canada has a lot of artists. I was like, wow, are popping. Drake came mm-hmm. from Canada. Uh, Justin Bieber's from Canada. The Weeknd from Canada. Mm-hmm. And it's another rapper called Nav. His name is Nav. He's from Canada. Tory Lanez is from it's Canada. Canadian? He's Canadian. Uh-huh. I didn't even know that. He's Canadian. People be getting under and the radar, like, huh? We getting under the radar. And I peep everything out, like how they're, you know, they're more into like the American culture, even though they're Canadian. Like, you know, like um, Drake had his opinions on Trump. You get what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm thinking like, man, oh. I guess, well, he's, he lives out here now You cool. know He probably has a dual citizenship You know So it's like He's from Canada But he's a rapper But he It all comes from American culture You Better. know what I'm saying So yeah. he was influenced Even in Canada By American culture Even Justin Bieber Justin Bieber All the rappers Up in his songs yeah. You know what I'm saying So I'm just like Wow I was like, but It's our neighbors It's our neighbors Canada's doing it But shout out to Canada Y'all 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 doing y'all thing Out there Canada eh For Canada. sure For sure, for sure. Uh, I heard a good joke Was they're like How do you, how do you spell they're, they're trying to figure out how to spell their country's name. They're like, C A N A D A. Because they yeah, say A a lot in Canada. A. So, anyway, it was a good joke. I didn't probably do it that way. Probably butchered it. But anyway, but also, like, the Latino artists that have been blowing up. Yeah, it's They've called. Been blowing um, up a lot. It's called. You know. It's kind of. Every time I see it, I think it's it reggae, but it's called like reggaeton. Yeah, they call it reggaeton. R- reggaeton. Um, so I get I get confused, like you know, like that, like it gets me confused with with, with reggae, Jamaican music. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. But he, uh, but Bad Bunny, right? He just, hey man, right? I just seen I just up, seen right? him um on I seen a post on Instagram that his album for the um I think second week or third week I don't know which week, but it's not the first week. It goes it's going number one again. I'm like man, people love Bad Bad Bunny, he but blowing. he's blowing uh, up. But I mean. <laughs> He did some little Nas X stuff. He kissed the supposedly he kissed one of his dancers. You didn't see that? Uh, I didn't know about that. Um, at the um, at the VMAs. Okay, hey, whatever floats your boat. I guess that's why you call him Bad Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but he's he's doing his thing though. He actually, I remember seeing a couple months back, um, that he said it's better than American rap. Hey, he yeah. said he he knows. Sorry, to cut you off. He said he knows a couple rappers that could beat American rappers. Yeah, probably modern day rappers. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, there's a lot of dope ass underground rappers. That's one thing that I think uh, has changed over time is the the art of rap. That is definitely for sure. For sure, disappeared. Which is like that's everything for hip hop for me. It's like like the beats are dope. Yeah, that's how we get the groove. But it's like, what are you saying and how are you saying it? Like, what's your what's the flow, the cadence? Like, how are you moving with the with the beat what's the right way to articulate you know this? you know like how are you saying what are you saying and how are you saying it like those two things and sometimes i would go i would say the rhythm of things can beat the words that you're saying it but people don't even have really good flows that's just my opinion over time but even though i have a, a lot of disagreements about current hip-hop and rappers uh one thing i'm happy to see about modern rappers and and hip-hop is to see black men getting money and Hip hop and rap music has made the most black millionaires ever in the history. Oh wow. It has made the most black millionaires is through hip hop. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't know how to manage their money. A lot of them get murdered. A lot of them go to jail. So that's the only sad part. But I am happy to see black men getting money, get to get their mom a house, get to support their family. Some of them even support the community. So that's one of the the things that I really do love about seeing these black men that are rapping get their money. For sure, for sure, for sure. But we got to keep that that money in the black hands for more times than we um dish it out. <laughs> then that's how we could spark. But that's another conversation. That's another conversation. But um, that's yeah, conversation. it helps. It helps. Um, for sure, it helps the um the the black community for sure, for sure. You know, all that money flowing in millions, billions. You know, the rap the rap industry. You know, billions of dollars, billions of dollars, yeah, billions of dollars. So, but not for the community that it comes from. Yeah, 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 yeah. For but, the communities, it goes you know, to. hopefully it gets hopefully it gets better though. But um, you know, like you said before, other rappers do invest in the community. You know, mm-hmm. they help out. You know, a lot of communities where they came from. Um, I seen a um post where Cardi B gave a hundred thousand to her um old elementary school. So that's nice. 
No, that's a hundred thousand she donated. You know, hopefully they get a music program. I know Big Sean has a music program at his high school in, mm-hmm. De- in Detroit. So, you know, they do try to take their money and put it back in the community, go to the schools, you know, help in, um, help these influence, um, influence these kids. You know, on the right path. Hey, help them out. You know, help them out. You know, if you want to be a music artist, here you go. You can start. In, you can start. You don't have to wait till you get to college or figure out on your own. You can start right now in elementary school learning different things and stuff. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? So, and then Kanye West, you know, he Kanye? has he has mm-hmm. a Donda school in L.A. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he heard he's trying to do Donda University in Atlanta. That would be cool. The, you know, I'm like, whoa, he's on some, okay. Shout yeah. out to his mom. Rest in yeah, peace. yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. So it's like, you know, a lot of people are putting different things into the community. Snoop Dogg just, he redesigned the the gym in Long Beach that he used to grow up playing in, the basketball yeah. gym. So it's like also helping in sports too, not just music. You know, a lot of these artists helping sp- sports. A lot of these artists helping sports. They have little camps and stuff, you know. So Mr. P. You know, Snoop Dogg has a youth football league, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, he was part of the negative too, you know what I'm saying? But he's, he turned it for sure into positive. Like there's so many rappers that, um, well, not rappers, excuse me, my language, there's so many young kids. That um that um have made it far in um the sport of football from the Snoop Football League. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some mm-hmm. that are in the NFL, and there's some that are Super Bowl champions. You know, if you follow Snoop on Instagram, he posts some of the kids that's in the NFL or that just got drafted that came from Snoop Football League. So yeah, shout out to Snoop. So shout you know, out. like you said, Master P, Master P does a lot for his community too, and mm-hmm. Master P does a lot for New Orleans, and he does a lot for LA because he left New Orleans yeah, to move yeah. to LA. Yep. And he, yeah. I, I respect that. No, he doesn't just, a lot of people just do for their community where they come from. But my speak cares, he does for the L.A. community what's going on. He was out there supporting mm-hmm. Nipsey and stuff, too. And out there, you know, doing different things. So it's like, you know, for sure, I know a lot of these rappers do give back to the, to the black communities. Yeah, the ones that are smart enough to do and to do it. And there's probably definitely a lot of people who are doing it behind the scenes. For sure, you know, for sure, for sure. That we don't even know sure, or see. Sure. You know, there's probably some people that we don't for know sure. that's doing things behind the scenes. Um. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about, T? Before you knocked out. Um. You know. That's it. You know. I'm just saying. Like. You know. At the end of the day, everyone has their own opinion about hip hop. But at the end of the day, it still connects to a lot of people. It's still the number one genre. At the end of the day, you know, more than 30 years later. So you know. You know. I love hip hop. You know. I will continue to love hip hop. You know. So I just want to give hip hop its flowers. You know what I'm saying? It's just due for the positivity that his it has. On the black community, so yeah, that's all I really want to say. And you can right. also follow me, T three three underscore Juliano J U L I A N O on Instagram. Boom! It'll also be in the description, folks, so you guys can click on it and stalk them. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, yeah, hip hop uh, is amazing. The history of it. Uh, if anyone knows what the five or four elements of hip hop is, write it in the comments. A lot of you kids don't know what that is, um, and that's fine. But Google it, search it, find out what the four elements, five elements of hip hop is. And uh, yeah, it saved my life. And uh, hip hop will always be like, it actually was my first love. Hip hop was my first love. Before I knew how to love myself, love my family, love anything else, I fell in love with hip hop because it just hit my soul, it gave me an outlet, and gave me an experience of nirvana as well. And so uh, we just want to talk to you guys about hip hop, about how much it meant. Definitely give it flowers. It's going to be around for a while. Can't wait to see more and great artists pop up. Man, for real. And um, quick thing, quick thing. Go for it, man. Have you ever made a track? Of course, made okay, several okay. tracks. Okay. Because I feel like every person you know grew up in hip hop, of course, made a track. <laughs> you know, what I'm at least made one track, and I made it even a track before. You know what I'm saying? You know, in my own way, so I just want to throw it out there. If you love yeah. hip-hop, you for sure going to make a track. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think um, that's the thing about going back to, like, the influence of what hip-hop is, is, like, people want to people wanna be what they see. You know, people want to be Michael Jordan, people want to be LeBron, people want to be Kobe, you know. But it's like, man... When can we make science cool? Like Bill Nye was dope. Like fuck, why Bill can't? Nye or, science, yeah, uh, like be, what's up with be, the be, uh, be. Bill Nye of color that people want to be like? I guess uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson would be someone, but I don't think people look at him like fly. But hopefully, you know, I think in due time we'll find someone like that. Um, but yeah, hip hop saved my life. Definitely made a track. 
several tracks, albums, EPs. Oh, you made EPs, albums? Of course. What? Um, so, but yeah, you just want to talk about hip-hop, how much it means <laughs> to us. How much, hopefully hip-hop means a lot to you. Comment down below. Tell us what hip-hop means to you. Or maybe you don't like hip-hop. Whatever. Comment down. Um, but we want to thank you guys for listening, tuning in. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. My name's Antonio D. Miles. We got Tarek T over here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Without you guys being here, we wouldn't be here. So thank you. And until next time, we'll catch you guys. All right? Peace. I said